So you might be wondering how I filmed that entire sequence and how on earth I got some of those crazy angles. The answer is the Insta360 GO 3. This is the world's smallest action cam and the sponsor of today's video. And I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of these, play around with it for the last couple of weeks so I can show you guys how you can up your creative storytelling game and get unique angles for your filmmaking. So I'm gonna show you what I get up to in a typical day, shot from very creative angles, whether it's having breakfast, making a coffee, hanging out with Neo, playing with Cali, going down to the beach, going for a run, all of the things I try and do most days. And I'd love to know at the end of the video what you think of this little guy and whether you'd add him to your camera bag. <laughs> Okay, whilst I was having breakfast, I saw on our neighborhood WhatsApp group that someone was giving away a hammock with a wooden stand. So I ran down the road, grabbed it, and now I'm gonna assemble it. And I'm really excited because this is something Rye has been saying we should get for the last month or so. We've got a big garden here, we can relax in, and uh, yeah, worked out perfectly. Right, I'm putting on the pendant mount. I'm gonna go into the garage, do some first person shooting whilst I find the correct socket for this Bolt. I'm also checking on the app to see the angle that I'm shooting at. It's looking pretty good. I'm switching to a mount I can hold in my mouth so I can just kind of look down whilst I'm getting everything in place. Okay, I was just trying for ages to stick a mount onto this impact drill, but it just wouldn't stick. So I'm just gonna hold this here and that should give me a fun angle and I can have a look on the back of the screen here. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Right, Neo has just woken up from a nap and I am just playing with him for a little bit. I've just had some lunch. Neo's just had some lunch as well. Yay! Yay! Okay, I'm teaching Neo how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Are you gonna pay attention? Okay, it's all jumbled up, and we're gonna make it one color each side. Okay, let's go. Boom, finished. <laughs> this is such a fun shot. <laughs> So I've had this cool idea of putting the Go 3 inside my guitar. I was trying to figure out how to mount it in there. Then I realized that the pendant mount might actually work. So if I place it on the back, if I drop it in. I basically cut the pendant mount on the back here and I could slide it around. Oh yeah, that is so cool. Can you see that? Oh, oh no. So 
So part of my mission as a filmmaker and storyteller is to share my life and capture things in an exciting way. Now you may remember a couple of years ago I did a review on the Go 2 and this is the latest model. I'll go through some of the upgrades later in the video but first I wanted to go through some of the specs and tell you all the different ways you can mount this camera to get these amazing shots. As you can see on its own the camera is literally smaller than my thumb but something unique with the Go 3 is the new action pod. Now this is a complete game changer. Basically, you can mount and use this camera as it is, or you can clip it into the action pod, it recharges it. It also gives you this flip up selfie screen so you can see what you're shooting. And the really exciting thing is, even when you take the camera back out, you can still see what you're filming remotely on the screen. Previously with the Go 2, you had to monitor everything on your phone app, which is still an option here, but this also gives you the option of lining up those shots by looking at the ActionPod screen. Now the thing that most excites me about the way that this camera films is if you're shooting in the free frame video mode, you can basically rotate the camera 360 and it completely levels the horizon because it's shooting in a one-to-one -one ratio, like a, a full circle. So it allows you to crop in post into a nine by 16 vertical or 16 by nine, which I'm showing in this video. And then you can adjust or change that as you please or even use that to rotate the image. So I used it when I was screwing up the blender in that first sequence. So I could rotate the camera as it's doing that in post, which you cannot do when you're shooting on normal cameras because they're a fixed ratio. It also means that the stabilization is incredible. So the flow state stabilization in this means that you can shake it, run around, do a lot of handheld stuff, and it comes out buttery smooth. So when shooting in video mode, it now shoots in 2.7K, which when upscaled to 4K, like I've done in this video, you really cannot tell the difference. Now, the reason I love talking about a camera like this on my channel is that it's so accessible for people. I think a lot of the cameras I use in most of my videos are very expensive. The lenses are very expensive. The whole setup is gonna be thousands upon thousands upon thousands and it isn't an easy entry point for people and people that aren't that excited about kind of learning camera tech and understanding settings. I think a camera like this is so incredible because it's fun for people like me that love experimenting and have an in-depth knowledge of cameras, but also it's fun as a small hobby camera for people that just wanna film their family, fun outings, and don't wanna lug around big cameras. It literally slips into your pocket and this is a camera I'm probably gonna be taking everywhere with me now because it's just so convenient and allows me to shoot almost everything I want to. It's an ultra wide angle, it's got that selfie screen, so it's perfect for vlogging. It's upgraded audio, so it's now got two mics on the camera. With the Action Pod, it now has 173 minutes of battery life, so you could literally take it out all day and not run out of battery, which is an issue I had with the Go 2. I'd have to charge it up multiple times throughout the day. But this is a significant boost in battery life. It's also just so light and convenient to have. And as I put it to the test yesterday, the camera itself is now fully submersible down to five meters, so you can take it underwater, get those amazing shots and living right by the beach and starting to go swimming in the sea. It's gonna be really fun to take down there, get those shots that I just can't get with my bigger cameras on my phone. So another genius thing about this camera is the magnetic mounting system. And it's the same mounts for the action pods and the camera itself. So these are the four main mounts I've been using. Firstly, the quarter inch magnetic mount. This can mount on tripods, on selfie sticks. This also has a reusable sticky base that can mount to most flat and dry surfaces. And then this is the two pronged magnetic mount. 
Again, a lot of accessories and mounts have this attachment. Then you've got the clip-in cap mount, and finally the magnetic pendant, which you can use for POV shots. Now for the more secure mount, the tripod magnetic attachment and this one, they actually clip on to the camera. So they clip onto the action pod, and then also, if you don't want to film with the action pod and you want to eject the camera itself, you can actually mount the camera and it can clip in the same way. And that will not come off now until you unclip it. So very, very secure. This is also an upgraded mounting system from the Go 2, which was pretty secure, but it would come off from time to time. Now, if you're doing less extreme action stuff, you just want to walk around or shoot POV, you can shoot with a pendant, which is a genius design. You can raise it up to whatever height you need it. You tuck it under your shirt and then you can just mount the camera like that. Now, another add-on accessory they sent me was this little wedge. Now, this is quite cool because if you aren't getting quite the right angle, you can attach this magnetic wedge and then mount the camera like that so it tilts down, or I guess you could also kind of spin it upside down so it could tilt up more. And then this, like I said, is for mounting on the peak of your hat so you can face forward or point down, get some really cool angles. I guess you could use this as a POV mouth mount as well if you just hold it in your mouth. Another exciting accessory is the mini two-in-one tripod, which works as a tripod, but also pulls out, well, but also pulls out, well, but also pulls out to a selfie stick, and then you can put the two-prong magnetic mount on that and use it for doing selfies. Genius. But then finally, a new accessory that I haven't tried up until now was the monkey mount. Now this just bends around and curls around things, and I use this in the opening shot. I actually bent this around my carton of oatly milk and I couldn't find another way to mount it in the way I wanted to but it meant that I had an interesting angle and it could follow what I was holding. I also used it when I was holding my coffee cup. Again this would be tricky with a heavier camera to get the wide shot you need with a lightweight camera like that. Those shots are really just something unique to having a tiny portable camera like this. I did also try out the fetch stick. It has a little mount for the camera for your dog to run around with, but I couldn't get Callie to hold the stick in her mouth. She was actually just scared of it. So that's why I tried mounting the camera on Callie's back instead. And we got some incredible shots. I loved just seeing her ears flapping around. And it was just hilarious seeing the world from her perspective as she was going up, meeting other dogs, jumping up, looking at things, getting distracted, running over to people. It honestly made me feel like I was experiencing the world through a dog's eyes. I've just mounted the Go 3 on Cali. <laughs> One of the new features I tried, which I never knew I needed, was the timed capture. Basically, I set up the camera the night before and got a sunrise time-lapse in the morning. And the only way I've ever been able to do that before is run the time-lapse all through the night and then into the morning. And often it's run out of battery by the time the morning comes around, or the settings are wrong. And honestly, I didn't know whether it's gonna work, but it worked perfectly. Okay, it's 2.30 in the morning. The sun is rising just before 5 a.m. And one of the new features is a timer. So you can start recording at a certain time. So I've set a timer to go off just as the sun's rising. Let's see if it works. I've got the tripod set up over here. And there's go three pointing to where I think the sun is gonna rise. Now something I'm very excited about in the upcoming series, Converting My Beetle, is using this camera as a POV shot, either mounting it on my chest, in my mouth, 
Also clipping it to tools I'm using. So having a power tool, having it mounted, getting those close up shots and also mounting it inside areas in the car underneath as I'm unbolting the engine, things like that, that I couldn't really get when I was shooting my last series with my van. A lot of the time lapses and stuff are from further away, wider shots. I couldn't get my big camera inside some of the areas I wanted to, to really show me undoing things. A lot of it you're left guessing. I can't really see what exactly what's happening, but hopefully I'll be able to show a lot more detail. And I love that the camera itself is magnetic, so you can actually stick to any metal surface. Um, I don't know what metal things I've got around. So for instance, I could just magnetically stick it to the front of this drill bit. Whoa. Whoa, shit. I could magnetically mount it onto the front of this drill bit and get a, just a slow shot of it turning. I'd like to see you try and do that with any other camera. So for those of you watching that have an Insta360 GO 2, I'll run through some of the upgrades and new features with the GO 3. So along with the pre-existing mode, video, pro video, which is now free frame, slow-mo, time shift, which is for doing hyperlapses, and time lapse, which is for static time lapses like I did at the sunrise. There is now a pre-recording mode, which essentially means the camera's already recording in the background as you're waiting for something specific to happen, then you can hit the button and it will capture prior to hitting the record button rather than at the start of that button. Then there's loop recording and then there's the timed capture, which I already explained. And then along with the preview in the app on your phone, having the action pod is a whole nother way to view the shot you're getting and adds that extended battery life. And then the standalone camera record time has gone up from 30 minutes with a go to up to 45 minutes. And then in the action pod, it's gone from 150 minutes up to 170 minutes. Another great thing is the storage has increased up to a maximum of 128 gig of inbuilt memory. That makes a big difference. If you're filming an entire day with this, with the go to with the lower storage of 32 gig, I was constantly having to back it up onto my phone, delete off the internal storage and start recording again. And that was very time consuming. So I think having even 64, like this specific model does, or 128 gig, you could shoot all day and have no storage issues. And then the audio quality has boosted as well with the two mics on the camera versus one on the go-to. I've headed back out because I want to go for an evening run. I've got Callie with me again. It's very windy, so unless I find some shelter, I'm not going to be able to chat much. I'm just putting my camera down here to shelter it out of the wind. Ooh, that felt good. Okay, I'm going to try and compare the Go 2 now with Go 3 especially in low light and see how it holds up. Ooh. Ooh. Kelly! Kelly, come here! Come here, Kelly! Come here, come here. Hello! 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 I've ducked into some shelter and we're going to do the audio test again. This is the Go 3. And this is the Go 2 audio, so I don't know if you can hear a difference. Hopefully the Go 3 is a little bit better. I had some more fun thinking of creative ways to use the Go 3 and unique shots I could achieve with such a small camera. Okay, I've rigged up this mount for photographers or videographers to get a kind of behind the scenes shot when they're taking photos, filming things. I feel like this is pretty epic. And if you've got a tight enough lens, you could switch the angle so you're shooting back on yourself as you're taking photos. I'm sure there's a better mounting system I could have used, but this is just to kind of show you the example of what you could do. Now, a couple of years ago, I saw this new type of lens called a probe lens, which could go in between and through lots of objects and you could pull it in and out, like dolly it in and out, get these amazing kind of macro shots of objects. Now, those lenses are super expensive and I don't feel like I would use them that often, but I was watching a YouTuber called Luke Edwin. I'll link him below 
I cannot take credit for this, but he used the Insta360 Go 2, attached it on the end of a selfie stick, and then he used a drill to wind in the end of the selfie stick, which I've managed to rig up. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I've rigged this up. I've rigged up this elaborate kind of collection of objects on my desk, and I'm gonna see if I can recreate a probe lens effect pulling through these objects. So have a quick look. So I've got a cafetiere, a couple of cans of prime, some fruit, uh, this kind of metal coffee cup holder, and then this little case that was for my neck cooler. So it's kind of gonna come through all of these hopefully. And then on the other end, I'm gonna be winding this drill in. I'm gonna attach this thin piece of wire to the drill bit and hopefully this will work. So if I piqued your interest and you want to go and check out the Go3, I've linked it in the description below. Thanks again to Insta360 for supporting my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.